Okay, alright. Hello YouTube and YouTube subscribers. Uh, today we're going to be doing a species profile on Neocardenia heteropodia. That's the scientific name that is that of the wild form of the red cherry shrimp. Now the red cherry shrimp is just a selectively bred morph of the wild Neocardenia heteropoda. So um, there are other shrimp that are the exact same species as the red cherry shrimp but they go by different names. So now um, some of these morphs include the red cherry shrimp, of course, yellow shrimp. There's also some blue morphs. There are some red and white morphs and all kinds of crazy colors. In fact, I was actually fascinated by the amount of colors they actually had, considering how the wild form looks. Uh, I'm going to put some images at the end of this video, just so you guys can be aware of all those different forms and that you can see the huge amount of variety that breeders have created from the natural morph. Now, um, back to the red cherry shrimp. Um, the red cherry shrimp is the most common and easily kept shrimp of the ones that are commonly available. Now I think the ghost shrimp is probably actually more readily available but the ghost shrimp is less kept as a pet and more often as a feeder. Now one thing you want to keep in mind with your shrimp is the compatibility is probably the biggest issue with shrimp. Now even though fish that look like they can't swallow the red cherry shrimp, a lot of fish for example will attack shrimp, they'll pull their legs off and stuff like that and they'll slowly wear them down. Even little croaking grammys which are only Three quarters of an inch, they kill neat red cherry shrimp, even the adults. And so keep that in mind. So good fish to go with these guys be low gu low fish like scarlet baddies, um, probably neon tetras. Some of the tinier barbs would probably also work too, and a lot of the smaller tetras. But uh, do not keep them with grammys. Do not keep them with cichlids. And there's also a few other shrimp species. There's also a few other uh, fish species that are just shrimp killers. So keep that in mind. And um, now as for red cherry shrimp in terms of uh, water chemistry, not too picky on water chemistry, pH of 6 to 8. The pH in this tank is uh, 7.4. I did have four red cherry shrimp and I did lose one and I got my water tested and everything and everything came back clean. So I just think it was just a luck of a draw and in that case I just lost out on that one shrimp. But I got my money back. So um, these guys here, the uh, females are uh, larger than the males. The females grow one inch. The males grow to about 0.75 an inch, so uh, they aren't big, and you keep them at very high density. For example, in a five-gallon tank, you could easily keep like 30 or so red cherry shrimp, as long as they had places to climb on and stuff. And one thing that's kind of odd about shrimp physiology is they need to keep climbing on stuff to actually like circulate fluids in their body, and if they don't climb, they'll die. So that's the reason why you should provide them with uh, wood and plants to climb on with onto. I think in the uh, red cherry shrimp tanks, I think they seem to go extremely well with java moss. Uh, low organism stuff tend to grow on the moss, then your shrimp gets to supplement or diet on that. Makes a good place, good hind spot for the uh, larva also. And the red cherry shrimp is known for being a very, very productive breeder. I haven't seen any breed in this tank yet, or maybe they did breed and I just didn't take note of it because I've been busy studying for the past week. But um, you can tell when females are ready to reproduce is they have the saddle on their back. Now the saddle is either uh, yellow in color or green in color. And the different color of the saddle in terms of color of the eggs. And I don't know why they produce different color eggs, but I guess they just do because the resulting shrimp tend to be the same. And then the, the eggs kind of just hatch into a mini shrimp rather than going through like a full crustacean larval state. So that's one reason why you end up with a whole bunch of little mini shrimp running around. And that's one reason why they are very good at reproducing aquariums is because they kind of have a bypass larval state. And that's why a lot of people actually like to keep red cherry shrimp with scarlet baddies and that the shrimp breed and then the uh, baddies get to eat some of the shrimplets. Now, um... About the breeding, the uh, females are bigger, they're also redder, and then the males are smaller. So I kind of repeat myself, but that's an important thing to take note of. They can get kept with different shrimp, but don't keep them with shrimp of the same genus, because then they might crossbreed. I think I might have made the mistake, even though I think the crystal shrimp is actually Cardenia, not part of Neocardenia, so they can't interbreed. And when you cross the different morphs of the Neocardenia heteropoda with each other, you actually end up recreating the wild type in most, in most of the cases. So, um, I guess I've kind of gone off track, but 
This is a very easy shrimp to take care of. Not too difficult. First invertebrate I've kept and I'm not having any difficulties. Just remember, water temperature about 20-25 degrees, pH 6 to 8. Uh, very adaptable in terms of water hardness. Do not use uh, copper containing water treatments or antifungal treatments because uh, they do not react well with copper. It's probably due to them having hemocyanin instead of hemoglobin for blood. So uh, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.